Good morning, everybody. I'm here at the Phoenix Herpetological Sanctuary. The opening's a little bit less wonderful without Mr. Storm with us. If you didn't see the last video, unfortunately, Storm passed away uh, a couple weeks ago now, and I've been really sad about it because he was my little buddy. So, in honor of Storm, we are going to be talking about another really cool animal here at the facility. His name is Miko, and he's a raccoon. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> So here's Miko's temporary cage. We actually have two raccoons at the facility right now. Miko and another older raccoon that we'll probably see a little bit later on. Her name is Runty. So you can see that he has this nice branch here, this nice house. Um, it is during the day and raccoons tend to be a bit more nocturnal, but he does like to get up and interact with people throughout the day. Um, right now he looks like a treble from Star Trek, but he has a face and tail, I promise. Miko! Oh, there you are! Good morning! <laughs> oh, it's so cozy. Here's another look at his enclosure. Raccoons are naturally curious animals, so we make sure to have lots of things for him to play with. We just got this swing for him. He has this little pouch that we'll hide food in, lots of toys in there, and you'll even see this mammal enrichment schedule. So you can see that we have our other animals on here, like Mr. Possum that we saw earlier, Scruff, and Chow the Otter along with our kinkajous and ringtails. But here's our raccoon enrichment schedule. We see that variety is key. We want to make sure that these animals are getting all sorts of different things to play with and so they don't get bored. So they get food balls, melons with treats inside, hanging bags like this guy right here, uh, frozen food, not when it's this cold out, but when it's summer, they love tearing through a big ice block of toys and food. And then they get a new toy about once a month or sometimes a bit more than that. You also might notice looking at his cage that it's kind of small and not ideal for him. So he's actually getting upgraded to this part of the facility, which is kind of our mammal area. So he is gonna get this big enclosure right here and we're switching this possum to go live over in his enclosure. So he's going to get this big, nice platform for a new house and we're probably gonna make a pond for him right there and that way he has lots of room to explore and climb and it will all be pretty awesome for Mr. Miko. Just so you can see our other raccoon's cage, Miss Runty's cage. I'll see if she comes out to say hi. Runty, where are you? She's like in this couch. Runty, knock knock. Runty. Here she comes. Runty! There you are. Hi, Runty. So I wanted to show you Runty because she's kind of more, <laughs> she has a pretty bad bed head right now, but she's kind of more of what a natural raccoon size would be. Um, she's a little bit smaller, but Mr. Miko is a lot bigger. So she has fresh water here and then her big water feature but unlike the myth that all raccoons wash their food before eating it she does like to play in the water i guess she's itchy right now do you want some of the little grubbies i brought Let's see if she takes any of these sometimes she likes them Ooh, well she'll find those later i guess <laughs> yeah, Runty was found in an attic actually, and her other siblings 
Um, a couple didn't survive and her mom didn't survive. So she had to be hand fed and she could be a little bit grumpy sometimes. That's why I'm not going in and petting her. Um, so I'm going to close the gate before she comes out. <laughs> Now she's looking for all the little grubs she spilled. You can see them littered on the floor over there. Raccoons have that very noticeable and easily identifiable ringed tail. Uh, some even say that they match the rattlesnakes here in Arizona that have the coon tails like that. But other members of the raccoon family are kinkajous, ringtail cats, um, there's also even the raccoon dogs that are really, really cute, but don't live here in the United States. Raccoons have always been one of my favorite animals, but working with wildlife and getting to see these animals in person and work with their behaviors definitely gives me a better idea of the kind of personality these animals have. I've helped raise quite a few baby raccoons a couple years ago and they are not meant to be pets. Unfortunately, they have pretty bad tempers and some of them, you know, end up biting people or hurting pets and they are just not meant to be in your home. They think that humans make really good neighbors because we leave out garbage and have places for them to hide when we leave stuff outside, but keeping them in their, in your home um, can actually lead to a lot of problems, not to mention things like rabies that they can carry. So bringing one home and having it as a pet isn't really a good idea. All right, I got a new bowl with new grubbies since Renty took the other ones that I had. So raccoons are awesome with their hands. So see Mr. Miko pick up these little grubs with his hands. This is just you know, a little treat for him, not part of his main diet. You can see how much bigger he is compared to like Runty. So their fur is really coarse and they use their hands a lot to eat with. Um, they have those big paws, but they're very, very strong. Uh, they can take down like a hundred pound dog. So they are definitely not an animal to mess with. You can see he kind of has this little ring around his neck and some hair loss right there. That's because, okay, you didn't like that. That's because he was a pet that somebody had a collar on and that collar got matted into his fur and he needed to have that removed. So when he got to us a few months ago, we had to take that collar off of him. He had never actually been uh, really outside and when we put this branch in with him, he got really scared and he didn't want uh, anything to do with that branch. When designing a raccoon enclosure, you have to make sure that there's not little spaces that they can fit their hands through and unlock the door. So if this lock was right here, he could potentially be able to squeeze his little fingers through and unlock that lock and get out. So obviously we have double protection. We have this right here and then we have a lock that goes on it um, that has to be unlocked with a key because we do not want people that are unauthorized going in here to play with Miko. Oh, big yawn. <laughs> so you saw those big teeth. Those canines are really large so they can eat a variety of things. They are omnivores, so they can eat pretty much whatever they want. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I am a little bit hesitant with Miko because he is so large and I am not one of his normal keepers. And just because an animal is cute or looks nice doesn't mean that they're safe. So I take extra precautions with Miko, even though, you know, he is a very good raccoon and looks super cute. So like when he wants to come down here, I know he really wants to play with me, but I don't really wanna take that chance because his normal keeper is not here and I don't want um, 
to be alone interacting with Miko just in case. It's a very um, good safety precaution and even though I know Miko just wants to play with me, I want to stay safe especially when I am not around other people or have a spotter. All right guys, <laughs> that is everything today about Mr. Miko and Runty the raccoon that we're going to learn about. And for this species, I'm going to say they should probably stay in the wild because there's quite a few reasons why they shouldn't be in captivity. So until the next animal adventure, love the planet and rattle on. Bye guys. Thank <laughs> you.